Bingham, but for many of you, um, for many of you, this is um, the first time you might have worked with us, which is great. So I thought it would be worthwhile to just go over a little bit of a, a background as to who we are at Sport Birmingham and what we aim to do in, in, in the city. Um, and, and you can see here that um, we're, we're kind of got five priorities and at the heart of those priorities is the ambition to tackle inequalities. Um, and just to give you a bit more of a background as to us as an organisation, we are a charity, but we are part of a network of 43 active partnerships across the country. We're primarily funded by Sport England via the DCMS, and we're positioned um, as the city's strategic lead for physical activity and well-being. So in essence, we are um, here to implement on Sport England's strategy at a local level. Um, and as I said, our primary aim really is to, is to tackle inequalities and reduce inactivity. And that feeds on nicely almost to um, the next slide uh, and to talk about the, I'm just hesitating here as the next slide rise up. The next slide and um, to talk about the Youth Development and Activity Fund itself, um, which we know you're all interested in, in here. Uh, and, and that is our aim with this fund as well, you know, to, to reduce inactivity um, and to engage those who might not necessarily engage in physical activity outside of the provision that, that you might be able to provide with this fund. So we know that we are very much preaching to the choir on, on that, that theme of tackling inequalities. And we know that you as, as schools have done some fantastic work in, in that space over the last few years. And I've just shoehorned a few statements in here from um, the government's school sport and physical activity action plan, uh, which I'm sure you're, you're, you're all up to speed with. But um, it, it kind of just highlights how Ofsted's inspection framework is, is, yes, talking about that broad and balanced curriculum that we all, we all know, but, but also is talking about extracurricular activities, um, particularly for those who face the stubborn inequalities. Um, in, in our patch of Birmingham, which sadly there are, is no shortage of. So I'm just cycling through screen, sorry. Um, I'm getting a bit of feedback as well also whilst my computer's um, going. So Abdullah, I'm sorry, but could I ask that you put yourself on mute? Sorry, I think it's uh, yourself that's, um, I'm getting a bit of oh, feedback. Uh, can you hear me? Sorry. Uh, I can indeed hear you. Yeah, if you could just Apologies. put yourself off mute, that's that's great. Thanks, Abdullah. Appreciate that. Um, so in terms of the schools youth development and activity fund, then um, we invite in applications of of up to four and a half thousand pounds, um, and that has a figure that we've increased by a thousand pounds in the in the last couple of um, weeks because we've taken the decision to to increase it and give a bit more flexibility and potentially increase the level of impact um, that you, you might be able to have as schools. And we decided to operate that fund in two rounds. Um, the first round, as you can see on, on the slide there, um, operating from December, oh, sorry, from, from now up until December as a targeted provision, um, and that will be running in 23 wards. Um, and then after Christmas in January to March, be running an open round um, and we think we feel it's it's important if we're trying to tackle inequalities to give priority to areas that we feel like can have the most impact in terms of physical activity and, and the areas that we feel can have um, that there is a, a bigger step change to have with increasing physical activity and, and health so what we've done is to highlight those 23 of, of Birmingham's 69 wards is we've essentially created, um, with the help of partners and, and our mapping tools that we have at Sport Birmingham, we've created uh, an index of multiple health, de health deprivation. Um, and you can see some of the data sets that we've utilised to, to, to highlight those areas of the city that require uh, additional attention. You know, there's such as childhood obesity, inactivity, free school meal eligibility. Uh, and access to blue and green spaces um, and we feel that we hope that um, as of the you know the, the fact that we've invited you as schools who have who are either situated in those in those 23 wards or have catchment areas that closely align to those wards we hope that we 
as a collective recognize the opportunity that we have as a group here to impact some of the um to tackle those inequalities really at the heart of where is is needed um, um what i'll do here is i'll pass on to my colleague lauren um, to talk a little bit more about the audiences that we're looking to highlight uh, and looking to work with within those priority wards. Hi guys, so nice to um, meet you all, whether it be virtually. Um, as Sam said, uh, we do have priority audiences for this fund. Um, so the priority audiences for this fund will be schools that support opportunities for young people who are between the ages of 11 to 25 years old and who fall under one or more of the following criteria. So physically or socially inactive, disengaged or at risk of disengagement from education or employment, uh, LGBT plus community, young women and girls, diverse ethnic communities, and those experiencing barriers in accessing opportunities due to disability, a long-term health condition, lower socioeconomic impacts, their geographical area, or those of no fixed abode, no permanent status, so refugee and asylum seekers or members of the charity traveling community. Um, so a club should be designed to meet the different needs and motivations of the target audience, particularly those who are less active and less engaged. Um, understanding what's important to those young people and where their interests lie, I think, is the, the first step for developing a YDA club. So it's really vital that there's involvement from young people at the start of your application um, and how you've included those young people will need to be discussed in your application as well. So we're just going to move on to um, the funding and what can and can't be funded. Um, so there are costs. Um, yeah, so sorry, the, the cost that you, the YDA fund will cover include delivery staff and coaching costs, uh, workforce training costs. Obviously, that has to be relevant to the provision and delivery and benefit the young people. So this could be upskilling staff through Educare or putting staff onto NGB sports specific qualifications and this obviously extends out to young people as well if they if you know you want to put on a leadership opportunity for them. Um, the funding will also cover administration costs, kit and equipment costs, rent and facility hire and marketing promotion. Um, other needs would be considered where the need is like specified and we have more details, but there would be need to have a further conversation around this before anything can be agreed. Um, so moving on to the guidelines of the project. So a YDA club does not have to be all about physical activity, as long as there's an element of it in there, uh, included alongside continuing encouragement for young people um, to understand the benefits of physical activity on their health and well-being. Um, a club should also focus on giving young people a voice and aiding them with their mental health and creating that safe environment for them to socialise at school and to express themselves through other means and different ways of moving. Um, we encourage all projects to have three main elements. So that is a physical, a physical activity, although it doesn't need to be the lead element of a project, but it does need to be there. Uh, mentoring and training and volunteering opportunities. Uh, we also require YDA funded clubs to run for a minimum of 24 weeks. Uh, we do allow for breaks in delivery if there's a school holiday, but if delivery can um, continue during the holidays, that's welcome and encouraged. And another uh, kind of guideline for the club is that they must run outside of curricular time so they can take place before or after school. Um, so we do have um, a bit of guidance on age specific delivery, uh, which is on Let's see if it's changed. Uh, it's just on the next side. And that's uh, for 11 to 14 year olds, we'd expect a club's project provision to deliver a desired sport or physical activity with a focus on continuously engaging and reaching those who may be inactive or lacking access to opportunities, come under protected characteristic or a diverse demographic or those who are experiencing ill, Ill mental health. Uh, we'd also like to see a recognition of support required within this age group for those possibly struggling with the transition between primary education into secondary. For 14 to 16 year olds, it would uh, include as above uh, with an activity provision, but we'd also want to see an increased support in shape of mentoring, youth discussion, a youth council, and a key focus on mental health support particularly around managing exam stress, home and personal stress and self-esteem. 
and these need to have clear links into how sport and physical activity can help with health and well-being. So for our 16 to 25 year olds, again, all of the above, and we'd like to see um, more opportunities for this age group um, to learn skills through volunteering with the club or school, accessing training and developing themselves in a trusted, safe environment with the hopes that they feed their skills back into the club or project and use sport and physical activity provision as a means to improve resilience and transferable skills, which can then help uh, them in making future choices or gaining future employment. So we're just going to move on to the application process. Yeah, cool. Um, so we tried to make the application process as simple as possible. Um, you might see from this that the application form itself is only five pages long. Um, so it's not a long drawn out process. What we really encourage you to do is to get as much detail down as possible about your project and get that back to us just so we can start those initial conversations with you. Um, so if we just go through uh, the application form very quickly, because it is very self-explanatory. Um, so for the first page, we just need your general details, your school details, who the lead contact will be, um, and also um, the amount that you are applying for. So this can be between 500 to four and a half thousand pounds. And then the next uh, page then would be the target audience. So we need to know who your target audience is. And we've asked for a primary and secondary um, target audience. So your primary could be young women and girls who have, and then the secondary would be who have a disability. Um, and then we just need to know about your target audience, um, how you're gonna work with them, and if there's any partners that you are bringing into the, to the project. And then moving on from that, um, I guess is the main bulk of your application, which would be the project details. Um, so we just need a proposed start and end date and how long your project is going to last, bearing in mind that we do require your project to last a minimum of 24 weeks. And then this is where we really need to know about where the funding is going to be spent, how it's going to meet the needs of your young people, uh, what your intended outcomes are and what exactly is you're going to be delivering on. Um, We'll need to know if you require any additional support from Sport Birmingham, whether that be through Educare, which I'll discuss a bit later on, um, opening school facilities or a pathway to podium. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we do really need to know how um, your young people have been uh, part of the planning process. So just tell us here how you've managed to gather their feedback um, and how you've um, come up with the idea you have based on what the young people have asked for. And then the next one then would be around workforce and sustainability. So as part of your application, um, really want you to consider any workforce training and development needs for your, your staff or any staff within your partner organization. Um, if you are successfully funded, we will include in the offer a maximum of three educare for sport licenses um, and these must be taken up and used by um, three interested and committed members of your workforce and so through the educare package you would access, have access to courses like child, child protection in sport, first aid essentials, mental, mental well-being in sport and physical activity and courses on equality and diversity in sport. Um, on this page, we also need you to give contact details for all the main deliverers, uh, whether that be the school staff or the clubs and coaches, the club details and coach details, so that we can contact those people um, directly should we need to. And we really want to support you to gain access to the different partners. But what we really want is to support you in building that relationship with a club so there can be a continued conversation between yourselves and development of the programme and improve, improve that school and community pathway. Um, so with this page, please be specific with what qualifications all parties involved um, bring to the, to the programme, thinking around the activities you've stated that you want to put on in your application. And then lastly, with the finance, um, please be as accurate as you can and, and as detailed in your application. If you can get quotes for things, that, that's brilliant. But yeah, we just need you to be as accurate as possible, really. Um, so yeah. On completion of application, you'll need to send your application to me via email, which should be on the screen right now, but it is also at the end of every application form. 
uh, what will happen is I'll take a look at, app, app, look at the application and take this to a weekly panel to judge. Uh, we're aiming for a five to seven working day response time. And we appreciate that some projects might be responding to immediate need based off the back of the pandemic. So we're really committed to try and making this process as efficient as we can. Um, I'd also like you to bear in mind that this isn't a, like a hardline application process. We really want to work with schools. And if there's any areas in the application that needs to be ironed out, we want to encourage that dialogue between um, us and yourselves so that we can get the best out of it for our young people. Um, so like I said before, really encourage you to just get something down, send it over and I can just, you know, ring you or we can have a Teams meeting um, and just to get those conversations going. Um, so the next part um, is, um, an, uh, sorry, <laughs> is an introduction to Dan Moss, who is the behaviour for learning lead at Colmer School, and Chris Gibbs, who is the managing director of Broncos Bears Basketball Club. Chris and Dan were part of our pilot school, YDF, to help us determine how the programme would work between the school and community. So their YDA club has been a real success story and a perfect example of how YDA funding can be used. So I'll hand you over to Dan and Chris to talk more about their project and how that's impacted their community and their young people in a positive way. Thank you. Okay, so shall I kick off and say hello to everybody. My name's Chris Gibbs and um, I'm this, the, uh, the Managing Director of Bronze Road Bears Basketball Club. Um, and we've been working with Colmers, I think, since just before Easter. We were based in the school principally to run our club for training sessions. And coming out of the pandemic, we had an ambition to grow the club and wanted to look at working with the school around forming an academy of basketball. So uh, we held a meeting with the school partners, with principally with the head, the head of sixth form PE, and with, with Dan, who was already um, head of the, uh, the behavioural um, and learning at, at Colmers, and he's also a keen basketball coach himself. Now, I didn't realise at the time that we were pushing very much as an open door, um, which was really, really positive for us. Um, but the way we approached this was it needed to be a win-win for the club and for the school. And um, from those initial meetings, uh, we were able to set up um, a, a small group of people working together to look at what would benefit the school and what would benefit the club. So very much a win-win for school and club. Um, and as part of that, we were already engaged with Sport Birmingham, with Alice around some work we were doing to try and develop girls basketball in the area. And out of those discussions came the approach to this new funding scheme. Um, so we applied and it was a very helpful process, I have to say, from colleagues at Sport Birmingham on how um, that process went through. And principally, we applied for um, a kit for the, for the school team um, for some uh, funding for the coach to, for his travelling expenses. We don't pay any of our coaches, it's all voluntary. So it's travelling expenses for the coach. Um, and part of our, our application is based around upskilling the young people around being able to get some paid employments out of it. So in basketball, there's an absolute need across the whole of the West Midlands for referees and table officials and coaches. So part of this funding will get a number of the students over the next 18 months through level one coaching for level one coaching level one referees and level one table officials. From there, they will be able to be uh, assigned to games across the West Midlands in the Youth Basketball League. Um, so th that was where the funding has come in. Um, but more than that, we've now been able to form a partnership with the school. And that's really where the, um, the benefits are coming out from. So. Um, our coach, Robin, he was in the school um, this afternoon taking a PE lesson, which then led into the after school club, which has uh, just finished now. Um, we, we piloted that in the last term before summer, and that was really going well. For the club, we've had three uh, members join us from the school, and hopefully some more will come across in the years to come. 
we also have a base now because we've got this partnership and people trust each other and it's a win-win the school get sustainable income from us from all of our training sessions from our games that are coming up we get a base we get a home where we can feel comfortable with uh, and we've gone as far as setting up a formal partnership agreement now which is in place and um, uh, is, is there for at least five years and that gives us a, a solid base to 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 work from uh, and gives the school um, access to our coaching um, and and for the, the the students to be able to see something where they can aspire to and I'll maybe hand over to Dan now to speak a little bit more about that yeah is is my slide as part of this because I sent it earlier I don't know if it's it's on there or do you want me to share my screen doesn't look like it's on here, so I'll, I'll do is I'll allow you to share your screen, Dan. Uh, bear with me one second. I think it's on there now. I can see it's on there now, Dan. Oh, if, you, if, if that's the slide you mean, I didn't know whether there was a different one, Dan. Uh, no, that's not the one that I did. Um, but and, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to talk anyway in general. I mean, if I look at those those boys that are there and the sort of the benefits that they've they've taken on, I mean, it's almost like an advert for comprehensive education, isn't it? I can sit there and I think some of those parents of those boys are, you know, you know, like teachers and some some work, you know, in quite quite high profile jobs and others. Uh, we've got there that that they're just from completely different background altogether and are so disadvantaged in contrast. And they're in the same team and they're and they're working together. And I suppose it, so. It's such a when I look at that photo, my immediate thoughts to sort of share with you is that, that the boy with his two arm, his arms around his side picked up the most attentions in in the school last year, and you know he's engaged in something positive, and we're seeing as a result of that a, a, a better attitude to learning, and that might happen uh, just by an involvement in the basketball team. But seeing the, you know seeing is believing as far as these kids go. You know they they've seen a brand new sports hall go in, um, and they you know they they're getting the opportunity to play in the match that you can see there. And there, you know, there was music playing beforehand. There was a crowd and they, they won't ever, they probably won't ever play in a fixture um, in their young lives as, as, um, as big as that, you know, and, and actually they were quite, uh, quite weak in terms of performance when we are play, playing up against players that, are, that have played for a long time. And they did really well, actually the, the, you know, the team's grown off the back of that. The, the, the boys have all, have all got more into the, into the game uh, and more into the sport and attended more training sessions. Um, and we've seen a knock on um, to, to, the, uh, to the lower year groups as well. I just wanted to share a, a screen if I can, of, of, if I can share my screen. I'll show you the picture of our morning clubs. We've had a huge um, influx of pupils in our morning clubs, which has been really nice. Um, I haven't, doesn't look like I can share my screen at the minute. Uh, just to I'm now the host. You, um, you are the host, Dan. Over to you. Fantastic. Um, so I'll just share that one. So if you're seeing this uh, in front of you now, just you know, like that. If I, I, I took that picture just because I thought it was nice to have the emblem in there, where you got Colby with school and the Bears, and like I say, that that's the sort of thing that means something to the kids. That's what makes them feel part of something special. Um, and if you saw our sports hall before, it was quite dark and quite gloomy and even though it was quite an inadequate facility for them to sort of literally walk in and you know like the, the, the bright lights the led lights they really light the whole place up and make it a real success and uh, the you know the new backboards that make it feel like a proper basket you know proper basketball facility and it's you know this picture's taken up i've tried to get the clock in in the background as well it's like quarter past eight in the morning we'd, we'd stop them and, and sort of asked if they didn't mind we'd taken the photo We've got a couple of leaders in there. So we've already got sort of ambassadors that are involved and doing some sort of coaching and mentoring with younger pupils. And that, that's one of the best things to come out of it, really. And, and post, post COVID lockdown, where pupils were at our school were, were actually set in bubbles of year groups in different buildings. You know, now they're mixing up and you've got older pupils and we've missed that to the school. And it, the, the basketball uh, sort of is given a real platform to a lot of that leadership and, and coaching opportunities just by getting these younger pupils along to training. And I don't think we would have got um, 20 year seven boys coming along to practice like we did a couple of weeks ago, a few less uh, yesterday morning, but um, I don't think we would have had those kind of numbers. I think we had over 50 boys and girls attending in the morning before school. Um, and that, that for one week, that's, that's incredible. Um, and and it, it, the facility, 
I can't believe how quickly it's taken place, really. Um, and it's really all down to Chris. It's got nothing to do with me. I'm, I'm just kind of bathing in the uh, in the glory of it. Um, but the uh, the impact that it's had on the children in terms of things like attitude to learning. Um, you know, we, we're getting a, a big change in, in the way that year 11 boys are sort of focusing. I had a couple come to see me at the end of school today. It's basketball and after school. I said, only if you've not got detention. So no, I've definitely not got detention today. I'm allowed to go. And, you know, it, it's that kind of thing that is going to, to move things forward for a few of those boys. Um, and it's, it's such a real incentive for them. Um, but I, I mean, that for me, that's that's it in action. Often we all talk about these things and the benefits that these projects have. But actually, the, the turnaround has been incredible to go from, as Chris said, April through to September with a brand new sports hall. That, I mean, I, I probably was a little bit like, yeah, OK, yeah, that sounds good. You know, the, the, these application processes drag their heels a little bit. But to be thinking you could be sort of completing an application now and then you could potentially get refreshed, and I don't know, you know, within the next few months, um, I think, you know, it's definitely worth doing because it's really made a big difference for us. Can I stop there before I waffle on anymore? <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect, Dan. Um, and, and thanks so much to you both for, for coming and joining us because it's such a, a, a positive example of what this fund can provide for schools. And it's nice to hear um, from both sides of the coin, so to speak, from, from your side, um, from a school side of kind of how it can influence behaviour and impact that that you know broad and balanced curriculum in, yeah, to use the terminology but also from your side um, from Bromsgrove Bears to to kind of know how it's given you a home and how it's given you a base um, and there's so much in that in what you've just said to pick up on um, but the two key bits for me were the kind of upskilling aspect for young people and bringing them into that officiating journey taking them from a participant right the way through to administering sport for the next the next cohort so to speak um, and then also just utilizing the power of sport to become a diversionary activity for those um, who might be on uh, a, a path um, that needs redirecting and I think sport has a I, I'm, I'm obviously very biased here we all are at Sport Birmingham but um, sport has a unique ability to, to divert people in, that are on those paths so I suppose the, the, the only aspect remaining of our presentation is, is, is over to you guys as, as a group, really, to, to open the floor to um, Q&A questions. Um, uh, and I know there's been a couple that you've answered very well in the chat there, Alice. Um, but anybody at this point is welcome to, to raise their hand um, or take themselves off mute and, and speak up. It's, it's the, the remaining half an hour is to use as, as, as needed, really. In the meantime, while people think about maybe what they want to ask or if there's anything um, that they want to comment on, I can just um, elaborate a little bit on a couple of the questions that came through. I mean, first of all, yes, we will <clears throat> we will share all of the slides out after today. There will also be um, a frequently asked questions document that we'll pull together um, just with a few responses that we're aware that you may you may be wondering about but also any that come through out of today. Um, I've just had one come through from Abdullah, thank you. Is there a deadline for the application? Now I'm gonna pass over to Sam and Lauren on this one, just because I know they've touched on the couple of phases that we're, that we're running in terms of a bit of a round one and a round two approach. I do believe that this cohort of schools that are involved today are of a targeted um, group. So I think um, there's a bit of a timeline in terms of when we want your applications to come into us, mainly because we want you to be able to action them as quickly as possible. Um, but Lauren, Sam, have you got um, any finer details on that? The, the, the short and simple answer is, is no, there's no um, deadline other than uh, the end of, of March. Um, what we will say though, is that obviously this first round between now and December is a closed round for you schools as, as areas that we feel we can have the most impact um, and we're not an endless pot of money sadly I wish we were um, we're operating the fund on on a kind of first come first serve basis um, so we encourage you to to get that get that application in as soon as possible um, just to clarify on those two rounds those of you um, and I'm, I think this is the, the majority of you in this in this group that 
are within those wards, those 23 wards that are open for that first round. That doesn't mean that you cannot apply in the second round. That second round is open to, to, to anybody. We're just operating that first round as a closed round to, to you guys and this cohort uh, because we feel like there is an increased need in that area. So you are welcome to apply anytime between now and March. We can't guarantee that there'll still be funding um, remaining at that point. We're giving priority to this cohort. Um, and judging by the, the interest on this call, um, I would anticipate that that, that funding um, will probably not be around until the end of March, which is to some extent what we what we want. We want that funding to be utilised and, and get to, um, to impact the children in, in the fastest and best way possible. I think um, in terms of advising and looking at the, the school term, um, I'd certainly suggest that you're looking at getting an application into us, ideally ahead of October half term. Um, so we will have applications come around to you if you've not had eyes on it already, um, so that you can start thinking about that, having conversations with Lauren and any other members of the team to iron out your project plan. Um, and as Lauren said, it's, it can very much be a back and forth process. We want to make sure that you're as comfortable with your project and delivery as we are and as realistic as it can be to meet the needs of the young people. Um, it would be great to see some of that delivery begin ahead of um, Christmas break. Um, we realise, though, that sometimes that's not possible. We also don't know what's around the corner um, and um, everything is pretty... Uh, pretty fragile these days but again I just really um, reiterate what Lauren said earlier if you've got a project plan if you've got an idea or if you want to have a phone call with one of us to discuss it ahead of putting anything down on paper please do um, and we can start getting that process up and running um, we can make notes on your project plan and send it back to you you can respond to those quickly um, but ideally I'd say go away, think about maybe who the young people are that you um, that you have. Um, and it might be actually you've got an abundance of young people and it might be that you maybe need to limit that at first. But something that maybe we didn't touch on in the presentation is any club that's funded, anything that comes out of this funding and this funding period, we really want to support to continue. We want to see a sustainable model and we want to help you to be able to deliver that um, and um, and see that continuing again a lot of that comes through on that upskilling and training of some of those older age groups can they feed back into younger age group provision can there be a nice kind of um, workaround in terms of a club supporting itself um, to an extent but these are all conversations that we can have with you um, but that's what I'd advise at this point. And we can give um, some kind of rough timelines, probably in an email that we'll ping across with, with all of the documents attached as well. Real so thanks, we've just Sorry, got, no, it's okay. We've just got, yep. Yeah, so Neil's just popped into the chat box. If we apply now, we might be able to start after half term. Absolutely. If you get a date down on your application um, and we think maybe, we can realistically turn that around and if it's a project that's ticking boxes um, then it's something that we can try and move as quickly as possible on I can't guarantee when first payment would be able to be with you um, but again it's 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 for us to have those conversations um, and see what your project plan is um, we're quite aware that there's going to be many differing needs um dependent on the area that you're delivering in the the young people the community um your capacity etc so we're going to treat every project plan as an individual piece um which makes it a little bit harder for us to give blanket guidance um in terms of creating um an application however it also does give you the freedom to be able to just inform us of you, you know you know your community you know the young people that you're that you're working with um, and you know the uh, the environment and such so we really would like to hear that in the application as well just having it though just going back to one of the previous questions as well that was asked in the in the chat box around providing provision across the two key stages so you've got key stage three and four um, you absolutely can deliver a project that spans potentially from that 11 up to 16 age group, as an example. 
What we would really encourage though, is that there is an acknowledgement of the varying needs that you have um, between those age groups, which is why we've given examples of a kind of three age group breakdown. Um, and again, you might be aware of some of those needs that we've not mentioned um, in here. We'd love to be able to hear from you about that. You know the young people best, you know what they're up against in, in their own personal lives as well as their school lives. And I think that's what we're really encouraging there is if you've got an 11 year old that's maybe struggled with transition from primary school and it's really about getting them involved and engaged in something um, as part of a team or even as an individual doing a physical activity. It, again, it doesn't have to be team sports. Um, but you may have a 16 year old that's really struggling with attendance and um, submitting work. They've got the pressures of GCSE exams, et cetera, et cetera. So we just want to see that actually the provision that's being provided to them is, is addressing and acknowledging their individual needs dependent on what they're up against at that point in their learning, at that point in their, in growing up really. <laughs> so, um, Again, it's really for you. You might you might go away and actually think that two separate um, club provision is is what's going to work best, and and maybe we have a discussion around how you meet those age groups' needs. But it might be that actually having them all in the same space works really well. And again, you've got those older age groups feeding back down as a as a kind of peer mentor. Um, and I know that sometimes that can benefit both parties, both age groups, um, can feed off of each other and learn. I've not got any other questions at the moment in the chat box and please don't all feel that you've got to stay polite. Do shout up if you've got anything that you want to comment on. Um, but I'm also conscious that sometimes questions come after these sessions and especially when you're reading through that application form you've got it in front of you and you start thinking about what you want to get down. So um, again, more than happy to pick up um, any emails or calls that come through and us as a team are are working quite closely on this. Brilliant. In that case, then, um, I'm going to suggest that we draw this uh, webinar to a close. Um, we really hope that uh, you kind of share our excitement for this opportunity uh, and see the value in what we can achieve as a collective with, with this funding. Uh, and hope that it gives us a bit of light at the end of the tunnel of what's been what's felt like quite a long tunnel over that lockdown period. We know that there's been a lot of children, a lot of young people who have sadly been you know, struggling over this period and haven't been able to be active. And this is a fund that really could help those young people as we start to um, nudge our way back to some form of normality. Um, so thank you um, for joining us. Thank you, especially uh, to Dan and Chris um, for giving up your, your time uh, to join us and sharing your project. Um, it was nice to bring it all to life. We've covered a lot of ground there. And as Alice said, we're all here um, to help with any questions that arise once you see that application process and once you have it, um, it, it on your computer screens. Um, but uh, thanks ever so much. Um, we will see you, I'm sure, in the application process and in various meetings as follow up. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, guys.